A study released this month by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention report one in 50 American infants suffer from neglect and abuse. A third of those were mistreated they were less than two weeks old. And if psychologists are correct, these frightening statistics may foreshadow increasing rates of crime and other social ills. Back in 1998, when authors Robin Carr Morse and Meredith Wiley released the book Ghosts from the Nursery, they presented startling evidence that violent behavior is fundamentally linked to abuse and neglect in the first two years of life. Their book pushed forward a national discussion on how, why, and when society needs to intervene in child abuse and neglect cases. And it led the way for even more research on how abuse and neglect actually hardwire children's developing brains. One of those authors, Robin Carmorse, is in Idaho speaking at the Idaho Children's Trust Fund's annual conference, and she joins me now. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. It's nice to be here. You know, the, the one in 50 infants was shocking to a lot of people. Was it shocking to you? It was shocking to me. You know, it's hard to believe that in this day and age that there's that many American infants that are, case. in this case, it was a, ne a lot of neglect. There wasn't as That's much right. abuse. Probably related at least in part to drugs. And you know, the drug the reality is that a lot of parents are imbibing in things that aren't very helpful to their availability to that baby. Uh, in the book, you build a connection between neglect and abuse in, in not only in those in the first two years of life, but also before the baby's born in utero and then after that, and then adult violent behavior. How did you start putting those chains together in that link? I'm a family therapist, so I have certainly seen that in my own practice and my practice is for basically middle class and upper middle class people that come to me I don't accept insurances so I'm seeing families across the whole income economic spectrum for 20 years I worked inside the system in child welfare and I was the director of parent training so I went around to all I had a staff statewide was looking at child protective service cases around the state of Oregon staffing those cases and, it, and helping parent trainers deal with families that were particularly difficult. So gradually between working as I do now and working earlier in my life inside of the system, I began to make the linkages. When you would talk to these young people who had committed acts of violence, mm -hmm. what did you, what sort of feedback did you get from them? You obviously, they obviously had a common link to some horrific beginnings as a child. Well, I think there are some common links, but I think to really understand those links, you don't, I mean, many people, when you read about the school shootings and so on, people will say this child acted out of the blue. He just snapped. Well, that isn't really what happens. If you look at those young lives, if you start even with prison, look at people who are currently in prison and trace their life trajectory backwards, you see that most of the people who are now in prison were also known at the high school level as kids who had some impulsive problems. They might have been gang involved, they might have been uh, early uh, kids who were identified with learning problems, they might have been kids who were alienated, bullied. You look back further in grade school, they were often kids who had diagnosed problems with learning, emotion. Many of them had families who were also abusive or neglectful. Back to the neighborhood before the child ever went to school, often there was profound abuse or neglect, and typically neighbors knew. They simply didn't know what to do. And then if you look back to the very beginning, that cycle begins with babies, babies born to families all across the world who are experiencing their first minutes with their babies, with mamas with bruises on her face or on her back, uh, living quietly, submerged in angry or demeaning relationships, maybe parenting too soon. I mean, circumstances that we know, mental illness is another one. So it's a trajectory. And if you ask the kid, they'll say they did it because they were mad at someone or they'd been being bullied or they're full of hate. I mean, their reasoning is coming from their cognitive brain at the time, but the real answers come from much earlier and the programming of the limbic or the emotional system that happens very early in development. 